Hey guys, Mad Science here, and today I'm on our slash entitled people. Where, well, it's entitled people. What do you expect? You're gonna have people being racist, you're gonna have people having problems with nothing. <laughs> Just because, alright, this is my property, not yours, even though it's not their property. Speaking of property, let's get to the first story. It's community property, that is. <laughs> Not me, thankfully, but a good friend. He had some money. He had come into some money, so after setting aside a college fund for his kids, he's divorced, he decided to buy himself a toy in the form of a new Tesla SUV. Ah, very expensive, very nice. <laughs> Now, even though there's charging stations popping up everywhere, he decided to install a charging station in his garage so he wouldn't have to be going all over the place. Got the station installed, got his car, and life went on. And uh, one of his neighbours, whom we'll call, uh, I don't know, Karen. Karen and her hubby had an older mole Tesla, and like most people, used the public charges for their car. One day, my friend came home to find Karen angrily trying to open his garage door when he somewhat politely asked what the hell she was doing. She told him she needed to use the public charge station for her car and that he was illegally blocking her access by keeping his garage door locked. Lady, private property is private property. <laughs> When he told her that the charger was his personal one, she angrily rebuked him by saying that all Tesla charges were public property and that he was breaking the law by blocking his. I actually checked on this and a home Tesla charging station only cost a few grand. Hmm. He politely told her to F off. <laughs> I don't give a damn about the finger. <laughs> and put his car in the garage and close the door. A little while later, there was a knock on the door, and he opened it to find a cop with a smug-looking Karen standing behind him. The cop explained that he was responding to blocking access to public property complaint. It took him a second, but he took, but then he took the cop, who seemed embarrassed to be there, and to his garage, showed him his car and the charger, showed him the invoice for the charging station. The cop nodded, went outside, and had a conversation with Karen, who screeched something. Unintelligible. At the story, right? <laughs> well, one day my friend came comes home to find his garage door half bashed in to the point he can't open the damn thing. Then he does what any normal person would do. He looked at the security feed from the cameras he had from his for his house. And there, at full HD <laughs> was Garen psychotically hammering at his garage door with a small sledge. He called the cops and Garen is hauled out of her home and is facing charges will attempt to break and enter and damaging private property. Oh, and my friend is suing her for damages to his home. Just to plug it in her damn car. Bitch, five year old. I cannot believe I just said the B word, but that just came out naturally. <laughs> That's how serious I take damage to private property, I guess. Customer said to my girlfriend, go back to China, you CB. <laughs> I don't even know if I can say those words. She's not Chinese, okay. <laughs> I opened a, parlor, a liquor store, not a parlor store, completely different things, in my hometown this year, which my girlfriend and I are running together. Last night I posted this, to, posted to the subreddit and something else that happened. In that post, I referenced this story and saw a couple of people asking about how I was able to legally charge this lady 15% extra and my girlfriend said I should tell the story. 4th of July weekend and we were prepared for the busy weekend. Although around 8 o'clock things had, to start, had started to slow down. In the store, we have a TV which I used to run ads for different events benefits, a few things for my store, and a couple other business businesses in town. When we have no customers in the store, my girlfriend, my employers are allowed to do the same, and I connect the TV to our phones, 
and we will stream Hulu or YouTube videos. That's very nice. So we're standing there watching Family Guy when the door opens. I walk up to the register while my girlfriend is turning the TV back to the ads we had we have running. And this lady who easily looks like she's in her late forties, maybe early fifties, walks in looking absolutely furious. Before I can say hi, she yells, "Does your manager know what you're doing?" <laughs> that's that's like what I picture. Like, Does your manager know what you're doing? It's like like so fast on that. My girlfriend and I share a glance. Because of our age, many people assume we just work there and aren't the owner and GM. I look back and nod my head. Yeah, I'm pretty sad that manager and owner have intimate knowledge of what we're doing. My girlfriend chuckles behind me. She, she huffs. I don't care who you're sleeping with. I need this beer. Do you have it? My girlfriend jumps up. Yeah, I just stocked it up. The lady snaps her attention directly to her. What are you doing here? <laughs> My girlfriend is very confused by that comment. Uh, I'm working. The lady says, No, that's not what I meant. And you know that. My father fought in Korea. So why is someone like you working here? This is an American company with American jobs. <laughs> you shouldn't be here. My girlfriend and I are absolutely slack jawed at this one for her blatant ra racism. Before we can say anything, she continues, Your kind murdered Americans. So maybe you should work for the Chinese or go back to China, you CB. Before this woman or my girlfriend can say anything, I yell, Get the fuck out of my store! The woman snaps at me around the counter. She screeches back at me. Who do you think you are? I'm the owner. I grab her arm and she starts yelling and slapping my hand, but I just start dragging her to the door. Now get out! <laughs> I open the door to my vestibule and push her into it. She turns back, she's standing in the vestibule and yells, I'm calling the police for impersonation and assault. I didn't even dignify her with a response and just walked back in like, later? I don't want anything to do with this. I hadn't noticed, but my girlfriend had gone back into the office and I started consoling her. I've dealt with rude people all my life, but that woman crossed the line. Around 10 minutes later, I see a car pull into the parking lot on the monitor connected to the cameras. I look at it and see it, see one of the trucks that's used by the sheriff's department. Oh no. <laughs> I wait a couple of minutes and I get up and walk out front and see this woman standing next to my door. She's given a statement to the deputy, who I immediately recognize. I went to high school with, with this guy, and we played football and baseball together. I walk out the door and, and greeted by, That's him! He's impersonating the owner and assaulted me! The deputy looks over at me, very obviously confused. Him? And the lady rolls her eyes. Yeah, it's him! The deputy says, Miss, he's the owner. She back goes ballistic on him. No, he's not! Look at him! He's too young! <laughs> Age! Very ageist now, are we? <laughs> the deputy is very obviously annoyed, but manages to explain to her that I am actually the owner. She then says, But he assaulted me! I explain the situation to him, and he turns to her and says, Miss, he is the owner, and he asked you to leave. Then he removed you from his business. The woman is standing there fuming. When she finally yells, Fine, I'll just get my husband's beer. I stand in front of the door and say, No, you're not. <laughs> Excuse me? You call my girlfriend a uh, CB. I'm not letting you back into my store. She huffs and yells, Fine, I am going somewhere else to get his beer. She leaves and before the deputy got to his car, I stopped him and convinced him to stay for a while. I knew that the lady was going to be coming back because nobody in my town carries that beer. 20 minutes later, the lady comes back, this time much humbler. I'm sorry, but no one else in this town sells my husband's beer. We're having a barbecue tomorrow and it would mean the world to if I could get that beer. <sighs> I sigh and say, well, I suppose it'd be alright. She, she is overcome by this look of gratitude, but I'll be charging you a 15% markup. 
and you will give my girlfriend an apology tomorrow. She stops. Why? I, I remind her what she said to my girlfriend. Well, that markup's illegal. And this is why I asked the deputy to hang around. Actually, miss, as long as he lets you know about the markup, he's perfectly in line with state and county law. She bought her husband two six-packs of the beer and then is escorted outside by the deputy. The next day she came in and handed my girlfriend a handwritten note. My girlfriend then calmly explained that she and her family are not Chinese. They're Hmong. What? Which, if you know anything about Hmong history, you understand the irony of the ladies your kind you murdered the Americans. Uh, was it the other way around? I figure it was the other way around. Oof. That's being uh, racist, oof. My teacher cut the tube for my insulin pump because we couldn't have headphones in class. This happened when I was in middle school, you know, back in the days of wide headphones, so about 2011 or something. I've been a type 1 diabetic since I was about 4 years old, I'm currently 24, uh, and I, ha I use a continuous glucose motor in an insulin pump. I had an IEP, so all my teachers were told about it and that I would need my insulin pump in class. That it might make noise, and I might have to pull it out of my pocket and mess with it if I need insulin. Or I might need to drink a juice pouch, and I was able to do so at my discretion. We had one teacher who was a complete heart for no reason. She was notorious for making kids cry during presentations. She even told one girl who wanted to be a doctor to find a cure for cancer because her little sister had childhood cancer. Oh my... Oh. That she would need to, need to actually be smart to do that while chuckling to herself. But a kid dream, man. We were, we were like 12 years old. As you can imagine, she was also at war with technology. And on a side note, these days I use my phone to check my glucose and give myself an insulin bolus. Bolus? I can't imagine being a kid today and dealing with a teacher like that when the lines are blurred and your smartphone actually is a life-saving medical device. But anyway, if you're not familiar with insulin pumps, the kind I use has a little tube that connects to the pump which has the insulin to my body which needs the insulin. This teacher also likely to be weirdly obtuse about things. Instead of being like other teachers and simply saying like, no cell phones in class, put it on my desk, which would allow me to remind them it's an insulin pump, and they usually say something like, that's right, my bad. She would instead try and talk abstractly about what she wanted to happen while walking around the room. So this particular day, she kept alluding to students listening to music in class, that you should be careful what you do because she can't see it. And that make that us kids think we're so sneaky, but the adults know what we're up to. I obviously wasn't listening to music, so I figured she'd, be, she'd seen someone with headphones in the room. And the next thing I know, she had snuck up behind me with scissors. It took me a good moment to realize what had happened because I was astonished. I was used to teachers thinking I had a cell phone or getting upset about my pump beeping during an exam, but no one had actually had ever touched it for much less cut my self-sustaining tube. I was actually sitting with my mouth agape when she turned to me, uh, now that she was at the front of the class again, and said something along the lines of, Mr. Wonderly, uh, care to share what tunes are more important than listening to class? At this point, I put together that she thought I was listening to music, she thought she cut my headphone wires. I replied, just the sound of my thoughts, while I still got any, since that was my insulin pump. She had to let go, let me go to my locker to get my cell phone to call my mum to bring a new infusion set. My parents insisted no cell phones until high school, but my mum was also scared with me being type 1 diabetic and too dyslexic. 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 Ah. Can't even say dyslexic. To remember her phone number and wanted me to easily be able to call her, so she got me a $15 Walmart phone and put minutes onto it. And now I feel old. <laughs> then I just waited in the front office for her. She worked from home and drove like a bad out of hell. 
She was so angry. I don't ever... I don't ever want to see her that angry again in my life. It took 10 years off me, and I wasn't even in trouble. She uh, wanted to see... The teacher had apologised to me, and all the teachers got some more disability accommodation training or something. Kind of anticlimactic, and my friend Floyd was entertaining, and that I should, should share. I... Uh, I am not gonna bother with reading those edits because, well, I want to get this episode done. So, if you, if you, uh, if you guys want to, you can find the story, read the edits yourselves. I'm gonna end this episode here, though. Links will be in the description to the main channel and the sick channel for you guys to go check out. I don't know what I was doing there. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know if it comes out. A ding, a ding, and Mad Scientist, Mad Scientist out.